Typically, music artists shoot for the top editorial playlists on Spotify, but there are so many other types of playlists on Spotify that you can shoot for, and you might even have a better shot. Let's check them out. Bobby Borg here, your music business coach with short, no BS advice that can help you turn your passion for music into a more successful business. Over the last 30 years, I've drummed in major label bands signed to Atlantic, wrote several music business books published by Billboard, and taught at major universities like USC Thornton. I recently spoke with Mike Warner, author of the book Work Hard, Playlist Hard, about types of Spotify playlists. Here's my question and here's his answer. So Mike, can you go through the five different types of playlists that exist? Starting with number one, editorial playlists. Editorial playlists are curated in-house by people that work at the major streaming platforms. What you need to keep in mind is that they are sitting in an office, they are playing this music out loud and they are sharing it with each other. So for an editorial playlist placement, the more lead time you give on a playlist pitch, the more likely the right person will have heard that song and consider it for their own editorial playlist. So just imagine it's like a small party in a small room and everyone is sitting around, different music playing on speakers, they get up and walk around. Imagine that happening over the span of a few weeks. Editorial playlists are extremely valuable, but you cannot guarantee that you are going to get placed on one. You will not even get a confirmation until after you are already on that playlist. Number two, major label playlists. Major label or distributor owned playlists are owned by the major record labels slash distributors, Warner Music owned Topsify, Sony Music owned Filter, and Universal Music owned Digster. These playlists, a lot of people feel maybe out of reach if you are not signed to these major labels or distributors. But in reality, there are artists out there that are independent that have been placed on them because in fairness, they do look to add other music if it is a good fit for these playlists. There are some submission forms kicking around online. And I would suggest looking up marketing interns on social media that may be helping out with these as well. Number three, algorithmic playlists. Algorithmic playlists. These are being fed by information which you will input when you are filling out your editorial submission forms. Things such as mood, instruments used, the gender of the vocalist. All of this information will be attached to that song to deliver it to the right people, to serve it to the right listeners, if you will. So if you're writing music that would be a great fit for people while they are doing their homework or studying, make sure that you are tagging the appropriate mood, genre, and all of that information, because that is going to help you to reach the right listeners. And these algorithmic playlists, such as Discover Weekly, will feed off of that information to make sure that they are giving the right music to a listener that wants to hear that specific type of music. Number four, brand playlists. Brand playlists, these are curated sometimes in-house, sometimes externally for different brands around the world. For example, Nike have their own running playlists where they'll have upbeat music that will play while you go for a run. Starbucks have more acoustic, chilled out music while you're sipping a coffee in the morning. These playlists are not out of reach and I suggest following the individual music accounts for these brands instead of the major brand account themselves. For example, Starbucks music on Twitter is how I actually found them, reached out to them, pitched a song in the DMs and got a song placed in the coffee house playlist on Starbucks. I actually turned on notifications on Twitter. So whenever they were tweeting, I got an immediate notification, knew that they were live and direct message them at that exact time. Number five, user playlists. User playlists are the most common. You should be very familiar. Anyone that has a user account with any streaming platform can curate their own playlists. The kicker to this is that anyone that chooses to can make these playlists public and share them so that anyone can follow them and listen to them as well and enjoy those curated playlists that have been curated by a user. What we've found over time is that some of these user playlists have a significant following and a lot of listeners, so they can actually drive some significant numbers, help you find some new fans as well. So definitely keep an eye out for these. 
Anytime you see an artist that is added to a playlist that is not an editorial playlist and not curated by a major brand, it may be a user playlist. Look up their name, find out if there's a way to reach out to them, especially if you feel it would be a good fit. You may find that this is easier than getting on an editorial playlist, at least initially. Okay, great. As a quick bonus, how about creating your own playlist and mixing songs in maybe with other independent artists? Creating your own playlist is extremely important for an artist. It's the first playlist that you're going to be placed on most of the time. So create a playlist and to get you started, keep it simple. Have a catalog or discography playlist. Put all of your music on there. You control the order, you control what's in there. The benefit of this is that if anyone discovers you and they see that playlist, they go to that, they press play. One stream now turns into a stream of every song in your entire catalog. Not only that, but you're putting your strongest song at the start of that playlist and you're including all of the songs that you choose. I've seen some artists do this every time they release a new track. They've grown their followers over time and that's actually become the home for all of their future releases. People follow that playlist and check on it constantly. Other artists I've seen use this to actually start structuring an upcoming album release. Every time they release a new single, they ask their fans, where should this go in the album? And they start to rearrange the order in that playlist and involve their fans in the creation of the track listing and track order for their upcoming album. The second playlist should be music that influences you. Yes, you can include your own music, but include music from similar artists that either inspire you or have similar sounding music and make sure that it works well. You don't have to put your own songs at the start in this playlist. This is about highlighting other artists in addition to yourself. And you may even find that as more people listen to this, it may start to impact and influence your related artist section as well. If you want to learn more about how you can turn your passion for music into a more successful business, be sure to check out this video or the video linked in the description below.